Uh, as I said, today we are privileged to have uh, two really outstanding coaches uh, amongst us. The first is uh, Balas Babela and second is uh, David. So Balas uh, hails all the way from Hungary and he is a former two-time world champion in the K4, winning in uh, the world championship in 2005 and 2007. And he's currently the head coach of our national sprint kayak team. And in 2014, he was uh, a proud winner of the Singapore Sports Award Coach of the Year. So um, welcome, Balas. Welcome uh, to, to the Motivational Monday. And second, we have uh, David. David is uh, hails uh, from Italy. And he's a former golf professional turned coach and currently head of education for Capital Asia. Um, he is coaching here in Singapore um, and has got quite a number of strong players under under him. Uh, he was uh, he is an NLP sport mental coach and swing catalyst ambassador. He's been really keeping himself busy connecting with uh, his uh, players, uh, other coaches during this period, and we'll get him to share some of the experiences uh, later on. So Balas and David, can I get you to just turn on your mic and uh, just say hi to uh, our participants, our coaches uh, who are with us this morning. Hi, good morning. I'm very happy to be here. I'm really honored to be chosen uh, one of the coaches to share on this special day. So thank you, Azar, for inviting me. You're welcome, you're welcome. David, uh, a few opening words from you. Good morning, everyone. David here. Thank you, Azar, for uh, inviting me. It's going to be fun this hour. So thanks again. Let's start. All right. Uh, so, so Balas, we're, we're going to start with you first, yeah? Uh, but before that, uh, just a note to our listeners, our viewers, and our coaches who are listening to us either via Zoom or on Facebook Live. If uh, along the way there are questions that you want to ask uh, the speakers, just... Uh, put in those questions on Zoom chat or comment them on the Facebook page and then we will look at it and uh, we'll, we'll surface that to the speakers to, to help them, uh, to have them answer those questions, yeah? Uh, but otherwise, uh, it'll be much appreciated if you keep your mics uh, muted so that we can hear David as well as uh, Balas clearly. Yeah, all right. So with that, we'll, we'll make a start. Balas, I want to start with you and uh, for both of you, I've been doing quite a bit of digging. And Balas, I, I managed to uh, dig this out. Um, let's have a look, yeah? Russia. So, Balas, uh, that was you on uh, in 2005 in the World Championship. Is that right? Yes, correct. That was my yeah, first. So, so congratulations on that win. Uh, a very fast <laughs> and very, very close very race, much. I must say. So, that's Lucky. a surprise for you, Balas. I managed to dig that out. Um, can you just share with us what was that feeling like, you know, back in the... That 205, I know it's quite uh, some time back, and I'm, but I'm sure you still recall that feeling. What was it like, you know, crossing that line first and uh, being crowned uh, world champion in the K4 200 meters? It was it was an amazing feeling, but thank you very much for fighting this. And uh, I'm happy that I was not a marathon pedaler because it would, took, it would take uh, much longer to show my race. So it's a fast race, and I'm happy that we could show, show the whole thing now. It was actually a very... Uh, interesting feeling uh, when you when we, you finish the race like right after that uh, you have that adrenaline rush which I, I don't I don't know if there's anything else what can give you uh, that kind of high feel than a win uh, at a, a major competition so it was it was just amazing when you when we pedaled back 
cool down and we went for the, the medal ceremony. The Hungarian national anthem is a, is a, is a sad national anthem and I couldn't uh, uh, keep it in myself. So I, I had, I was, I was like tearing during that. That, that was maybe one of the, the most amazing moment uh, in my sport career. The first uh, win at the World Championships. So it was, it was something what I wish for all the athletes who are putting their, themselves uh, into a sport 100% to have an opportunity to experience that. It doesn't have to be a world champs. It can be something what they really uh, aim for, but to be able to achieve what you were aiming for is an amazing feeling and it's, it's, it cannot be compared to anything else. Oh, sounds, sounds amazing. Sounds really amazing. And I, I can sense that, uh, you know, you, you, you are sounding a, lot, uh, a little bit emotional trying to recall uh, that time when you first clinched that world championship, and then you did it again in uh, two thousand and seven. Yes. I, yeah. So, so I just, I just wondering, uh, you know, what motivated you to to strive for excellence, and uh, you know, to 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 do your best to perform at the world champs, and you know, being crowned the world champ. Um, how was the that motivation, and what what motivated you, and what was the role of your coach, and what role did he? Uh, play in you know getting you guys really strong and uh, doing really well um, in those two years. Actually, it started way way uh, earlier. So to be able to be motivated, it's not something what comes you know in a few days or a few months. Uh, it started uh, when I started the sport. I started when I was nine, and uh, um, my my father was a coach. He's a coach still actually. Uh, so at first, for me, sport was nothing else, just uh, enjoying uh, the company of others. So I, I was not extremely serious. I have a twin brother. I don't know if you guys know. He was way more successful uh, as a young kid in this than me. And that was satisfying enough for me at a competition. So when we started the competition, he was in front. I was happy with that. I just paddled and finished my race and I was not uh, really worried about my uh, achievement. I was happy for, for my brother and th that was enough. So I think what, what was crucial for me uh, to be able to achieve what I achieved is, is this love, like falling in love with the sport and falling in love with, uh, with, with my, my teammates and, and, and uh, I, I have friends, you know, from then who are still my friends and, and we are really close together. So that was something what, what, what motivated me. So it was yeah, feeling uh, satisfied uh, about being there on the water is what was something what, what motivated me. So it started very young. So it, 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 what is the magic in coaching, I think, and, and why, I, why I feel that uh, the coaches, first coaches and, uh, and the coaches for, for young athletes are very important is to uh, make them uh, feel the way I felt. So make them fe fe feel in love with sport. Yeah. Yes, yeah. achieve that, so, that, you know, that you can do things without even thinking about it. You, you do the training and you don't, don't, don't think that it's hard or don't think that, that it's, it's difficult because you just love to be there and you love to do that. It's, so I, I think guess, uh, yeah, so I guess that's what uh, we coaches uh, always strive to do, you know, um, to get our athletes, our players, our students to really be passionate about what we're doing. And I must say, I also love uh, the, the look, if you can see, uh, <laughs> The picture on the bottom right there, it's quite cool. You look like a rock star with the long hair and uh, yeah. quite uh, cool glasses. Uh, but yeah. I want to pick up on the word that you used, the fact that you started when you were nine years old and uh, your father was uh, a coach then. And yes. uh, yesterday, for those of, uh, of you who have been um, following our Facebook page, you would have seen us posting about the My First Coach program and acknowledging yes. that actually... The first coaches in every child's life are indeed the, the parents. Yeah. Would you agree yes. with that, Balas? Yes, definitely. So for in my case, uh, it's it's a bit different because my coach is really a coach-coach, but, but uh, I really believe that uh, what parents can give 
uh, at the first uh, decade of, of our kids' life is, is crucial for the next uh, years and decades uh, as an athlete or even as a, as, as a human being. So it's, it's, it's extremely important. So I believe that uh, that is the, the, the first and most important part of uh, human's life, not only as an athlete. So yeah, it's, 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 it's really, really important. Yeah, and that's why we, we kind of roll out uh, that. And I think on the part of coach and coaching, I think you've really, really done well. Um, and in 2014, you were named Coach of the Year. So just now, I, I asked you for your thoughts and feelings and reflections as, a, as an athlete and winning the World Championship in 2005 and 2007. What was the feeling like being named Coach of the Year in 2014? Actually, I was really surprised. I was not expecting uh, that to happen, uh, but it was a very nice feeling. So I felt that uh, actually in 2014, we, uh, my team, we didn't do uh, exceptionally well. We were just building our, our, our base. We, we, just, we were just building for something. But uh, what uh, I felt that uh, our work was recognized. So I, I consistent work and uh, what we were building was recognized. And that, that made me uh, feel very good so that that really the hard work for healing and it uh, at, at, at first honestly it was not something what is like extremely important for me but the the reason why I feel that it is important is is because of my athletes so it's not it, because it's a reflection of their achievement so so if uh, I, can, I wouldn't be able to be a coach of the year if I wouldn't have athletes who are who are doing well. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, it's always important to to look at the, the progress. So where did those athletes came from and where they are at that moment? So the improvement. And I think that was amazing that it was appreciated. Yeah, and I think uh, I, I managed to dig this out and it was uh, from an article back in 2007, I believe, where that was when you first joined Singapore uh, Canoe Federation as a, as a coach. And I think you were meant to leave that same year in December, in Christmas. But uh, I think yeah. that the players' reaction about how they love your coaching was uh, what made you uh, stay. Is that right, Balas? Yeah. Uh... Okay, I will, I will share the story with you, like really honestly. So when I came to Singapore, it was in 2008, uh, I was not planning to stay here for long. I was still an athlete back then. So I was an, I was an athlete coach uh, for the past two years then. And I, was, I, I thought that uh, I could come here for like six months, help a bit, you know, enjoy uh, the weather because it was the, the period of time when in Hungary it's quite cold. And after that, go back, continue my, my training and, and just, you know, have, have a fun experience here. Uh, but when I came here, the, 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 what, what I felt that uh, the athletes uh, were really passionate. So that really, I mean, they were not fast. They were not, uh, not, not, not uh, really good in the sport. But the passion what they had uh, towards this sport was amazing. And uh, what I had to do is very simple. I just had to believe in them and believe that with hard work, we can get somewhere. And uh, I think that belief uh, made them believe also. And that's what they didn't really get before. So nobody really believed them before, believed in them before. And uh, when I went back for Christmas, actually what they did, they, they wrote a, a letter to me, uh, which, which uh, like if I can quote it properly, they were saying that uh, I can go back, no problem. So I can leave. Uh, they understand that if I can find another place where I can coach uh, a better team that I can coach, then I should do that. So I shouldn't care about them because, because they don't deserve this kind of attention and they are happy with what I give them and uh, they wish me 
luck in the future if, if I don't come back. So th th that kind of uh, selflessness and love, what, what they showed towards me, uh, made me think that maybe this is the place where I should stay longer. So yeah, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was tearing when I was uh, going onto the plane and, and really this was something amazing that, that the feeling was, was, was just amazing. So I came back. Yeah, that and, was, uh, that, that's an amazing story, Balas. Uh, thank you very much for, for sharing it with us. Uh, I, think, I think all coaches would want to you know, achieve something like that, the sense of gratification, sense of satisfaction when your athletes do something like that uh, uh, to us. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, Balas, for, for, for sharing that story. Really amazing. Uh, David, I, I'm going to move on to you now. Um, and yeah, quite an illustrious career as well as a professional uh, player. And then uh, subsequently in 2012, uh, you know, becoming a coach. So your, your thoughts and your reflection on your time as uh, a golf uh, player, a professional, amateur and professional uh, back then. David? Sure. Um, so I have played in some, you know, for some years, important competition, but um, I will say the stress had the best of it. Um, so I will say very simply, my reflection is, uh, as a player, is that the body needs to be in connection with the, uh, with the mind. In, in order for us to um, achieve uh, and to succeed in sport, especially at a very high level. Mm, yeah. So, so that the, is, uh, what, where, where did that motivation come from? Did it, did it come from something uh, inside you? Was it something that, you know, was encouraged by your coach? What was the experience like? Well, since when I was young, I was, uh, you know, dreaming to uh, represent the country. Uh, in this case, my uh, Italy, basically. And uh, I was extremely uh, motivated. So uh, it's something that I will say most probably came from uh, my, my soul. So I'm going to give you a little story. Uh, when, I was, uh, when, I, when I finished school, almost every day, I used to um, hitchhike to the golf course uh, to train as much as I could. And uh, during the evening, my mind used to call the golf course to figure out if I was still there. So basically, I was uh, still waiting the last member to leave the golf club and I was asking this member to bring me home, please, because I couldn't, I couldn't drive the car because I was quite little. So yeah, this is, this is something that uh, probably is more coming from the soul than, than anything else. And uh, also my coach had played an important impact on, uh, on my career development and, uh, and they made uh, basically me see the potential I had. So I will say coaches have a huge influence on on the future of the athletes. Mm. So, was was that the the reason why you eventually in twenty twelve make that switch from uh, player to coach? Well, uh, in that period, I was uh, incurring in some uh, in some injuries, and uh, at the same time, I couldn't manage the stress. So it was a point of my life where I. I, I needed to find the perfect balance. And, uh, you know, I, I felt like at the same time that I was trying to feel balance, I was uh, especially under pressure uh, to achieve results. So therefore I started as a joke to, you know, coaching without any expectation. And uh, surprisingly, I felt a very strong engagement with it. Mm, mm, so I started yeah. from that moment, I started studying um, hardly because I, were, I was already start, uh, studying back in the years, but from that moment onwards, I tried to get more into the details of, the, of, the, of my work. So into the swing, into the uh, you know, biomechanics, into the motion, into the uh, body connection. And then I realized that I was like following the, the right path that I, that I wanted. So, you know, um, it's the, uh, I, 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 always, I always like to say to my, my student that every time they hit a shot, it's like if I was there hitting for them. So when they mm. hit a ball, it's like if I was there playing. So I'm having perfectly balanced right now, even if I'm not playing, because the time that they are hitting a beautiful shot up in the air, flying every, like for five, six, seven, eight seconds, and they are happy, I'm very happy. So, you know, 
even if I'm not playing anymore, I'm a coach due to, you know, this kind of decision, I will say that I'm, I'm really happy to, to, to have changed and, uh, and to be here now. That's nice. Uh, that's nice to hear, um, uh, David. And I, I, I have something that I, I dug out about you and I wanted to ask if you could share uh, why you, you, you put this because it's really interesting uh, for me when I, when I saw this, that the greatness of a, a coach uh, is based on two points, shaping a physical difficulty and pulling out the talent, unite mind and body into a single channel. So it sounds like uh, something that you strongly believe in and uh, kind of your coaching philosophy. Would you like to share a little bit about that? Yeah, it's basically, uh, this is due more to my experience as a player. So, you know, um, try to figure out what are your limitations in your body and try to understand the level of your, um, of the level of your mind compared to, to your body and try to figure out how you need to balance each other and try to find the perfect connection. I think this is one of the most important concepts not just in golf, but so not just in my sport, but in every, in every sport. So, you know, um, try to understand the limitation, try to understand the, 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 the points where, you know, the your students uh, is struggling with and try to understand where is the potential and then from there make a decision and move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. And I, I also found uh, something uh, about you that, that I thought... Uh, it resonate with me because uh, it talks about how um, you know the use of technology has been something that uh, I think for for a lot of uh, coaches they 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 find it a challenge they don't really uh, embrace it as much as uh, we would like them to uh, for various reasons obviously um, and I I wanted your your thoughts on that about the use of technology and I see. Uh, Mark Richmond asking the same question uh, about the importance of uh, the use of technology in the coaching. So would you like to share a little bit about that? Absolutely. So during this series, I'm, uh, I'm trying to specialize uh, more and more and try to understand also the anatomy of the body. And, uh, you know, using technology, there is no guess. There is just one answer. So that is very important because you can create a very trust relation between uh, you coach and student. So if, if we have and we, if, if we see the data that you can't say, okay, that's not true, you can move forward and you can achieve results in a very, very fast way. So I devote my time on, uh, on learning and increase uh, the, the knowledge, but not just in uh, studying and understanding, but also in the type of technology that are out there in the market. And, you know, Every time I see my student achieving results, this is uh, stimulating me to uh, learn more and invest still more money in the technology because this is the, the way to go. This is, the, this is the easiest way for me as a coach to achieve a result in a very, very fast way. So I could not be, I could not be a great coach without it because it's, gonna, it's, gonna, it's always a guess. If I, if I tried, even with, just with a video camera, even if I have a very high resolution camera, 250 frames per second, this is not enough because 2D is, is completely different than 3D. What it looks, it doesn't mean they're real. So invest in the technology and especially know the product that you are buying, that is the most important aspect. I, I have per uh, later, as you said, I'm gonna show you a few uh, one slide regarding it and you're going to be surprised about what I'm thinking about technology and also um, what you need to do as a coach to understand if that technology uh, is important for you in your daily uh, work or not. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we look forward to that in a short while. So I I'm going to, uh, thanks for that sharing. I'm going to swing back since we're talking about golf, I'm going to swing back to, to Balas and uh, just uh, ask, your, ask you about your thoughts in this current COVID situation where, you know, we can't get together with our athletes um, and we can't train for, for you, especially can't train in the water. Uh, what are some of the ways that you have uh, continued to engage with your athletes, uh, continue to motivate them and make sure that when the circuit breaker and the COVID situation gets better, 
your athletes will be ready to bounce back uh, into the water and training uh, as hard as they did before. Balas, your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I think the first and most important thing is uh, we have to stop saying that now during these difficult times, hard times and all these things, with that, just saying that we are already uh, making some questions in the athlete's head. So we can say different times, but we don't have to say that it's a difficult time, even if it is. So if you already uh, tell that it's how difficult it is, especially for young athletes, they will just, you know, believe that. And even without uh, having difficulties, they will find some difficulties because, you know, everybody says that it's so difficult now. So it's, 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 it, it must be difficult for me as well. So it's a different time. So we have to adopt, but it's, it's different. It's not, not uh, necessarily more difficult or, or not necessarily less difficult, but it's just different. So what is the most important is to adopt, the situ adopt to the situation. What we did, okay, for me, it, was, it wasn't that hard because uh, the senior team, uh, we, we have a, a few uh, so-called professional athletes. We could, we could get uh, uh, pedaling machines to their house and they can do the training on it. So I try to not uh, make them feel that it is something like totally different and, and they have to worry about the, the, what, what's going to happen after this because I believe they don't, ha they don't have to. So we are kind of uh, continuing uh, the training uh, plan, what was uh, given to them beforehand. So with, of course, some modifications, but it's, it's what is difficult is, is, as you mentioned, is to stay motivated. So not, you cannot start to motivate people. They just have to try to stay motivated. So if I would want to start them uh, to be motivated now, then I would be a terrible coach. They should be motivated already. And I just have to, you know, have them uh, that fire burning. So what I do and what I suggest to coaches to do is, is you know, we have, this what we are using now is, is zoom for example but any other way uh, you should uh, keep in contact with your athletes and not necessarily only about uh, their training so it's it's really a um, good thing if you could call them and if they could see you you could see them uh, and talk to them uh, just ask them how they feel how they are just to make them feel that you care about them is I think is the is the most important thing, uh, because that's that's what matters the most, and that's what is missing. So now in this world where everybody is on the phone, uh, before this already nobody was using the phone to call. Everybody was using it to message. So calling was already a weird thing. Why do you call people when you can message? So what I what I what I believe in is that you have to. You have to call, you have to be able to see each other. If, I mean, I'm used to this because I live in Singapore for 11 years. So the way I connect with my, with my parents and my, my family in Hungary is through, through this kind of uh, conversation. So it's something which is really close to, to, to being there. So I think that's, that is crucial to, to, to communicate with your athletes to make sure that they feel good and try not to make them feel that this situation is, is, is more difficult than others. So that's, that's what I, I think is, is very important. Yeah, so I, I, I see you talk about, uh, you know, maintaining that connection and uh, having a, a regular routine so that you, you can stay motivated. So I think this is yeah. a wonderful advice for, for athletes or even coaches for that matter, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's for, for everyone. So if, I mean, it's really, you just have to move on. Like, instead of, of just worrying about how uh, bad and difficult it is, just move on and, and live like if it would be uh, a normal day. So you have to plan your day as if you would, if we wouldn't have this, this circuit breaker. You have to schedule uh, your things uh, just as if it would be not a circuit breaker now. So it's, it's these these things are, are important. What about uh, exercising? So you 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 have to exercise if 
you know, if you're an athlete or a coach, or even if you are just, you know, a regular person, exercising, uh, physical activity is, 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 is really important. It's, it's important for your, for your body and it's important for your mind as well. So it's, it's just, you know, you just have to schedule that in. Yeah. It's, it's, Thanks. Yeah, it's wonderful uh, advice there. Thanks. Uh, I, I think really that's the advice that we've been telling everyone, not just uh, athletes and coaches, but uh, all Singaporeans, you know, to, to stay active uh, throughout this period. Um, and you know, do do simple exercises that they can do at home. Um, yeah. And uh, David, swinging back to you and uh, the work that you've been doing, and similarly connecting with the coaches, connecting uh, with with your players. How, how has that been like? And uh, I wanna just allow you to to share uh, your your slides and your your screen. So I'm gonna give you the hosting um, rights here. Give me a minute. Uh, you don't need to. I'm I'm doing it. It's perfect. I I think you just need to accept. Yeah. Done. Can you see it? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So, I I like to start from this uh, uh, from this picture. Uh, first of all, I I completely I completely agree with uh, Balas. I actually is. Uh, it's really good that you explained this. Uh, I think it's really, it's really good for, for us also to, uh, uh, you know, take in consideration all the aspects that you said and, um, and thank you for that. Um, this is a, a very interesting picture that as it shows uh, how the brain functions and create outcomes. It's uh, one of the most uh, important pictures for me that I like to share during uh, the workshops and the webinars and the calls that I, that I have done until now. So it's basically explained how the gears must connect to each other. So uh, in other ways, all the receptors inside our brains needs to uh, like collect all the sensation. And this sensation, basically, um, the receptors uh, transfer this uh, sensation in uh, information, and then they transfer this to the body. So I really find this one, like a, a, the connection that I said before, the most important thing, because you can be a very strong athlete, but if your mind is not with you, if your sensation is not with you, if the information that you are, you know, uh, giving to your body are not correct, it's really hard to be or to, or to, or to have a very strong performance. Um, this is, uh, this is the, the, the quote that I like to say to, uh, to all my students and, and also uh, to, my, to my colleagues. Results do not come out of nowhere. So what I mean for results? Results is in life. So le let me give you a couple of examples. Um, like be happy. I want to be a happier person. But how do I achieve that? So this is a result. So change something that you don't really like. Is there something that you don't really like? You need to active now. If you stop, if you don't do anything, you're not going to achieve that result. You're not going to be happy. In family, let's say you need to have a better relation or you need to spread more love in your family. You need to start now in order for you to figure out and to get results. Work, succeed in your field or be promoted, for example. And friends, let's say, for example, to reconnect with, uh, with an old friend. So I like always to say no procrastination and be active now. Um, One, yeah, wonderful yes. advice there. Uh, don't procrastinate. I think sometimes uh, we we tend to fall into that uh, procrastination sort of mode, and we end up not doing anything. And that's what we've been encouraging people, particularly our coaches, at this time. Make use of this time, you know, to to reflect on your coaching practices and look at what you can do now in order to bounce back stronger when things get better. Um, um, hopefully, sooner rather than later. Absolutely, I totally agree on that. It's uh, like Balas what said before. You know, just be just in this period of time where you know uh, uh, everything is uh, you know is settled, everything is not moving. You know, it's a, it's a challenge period, so uh, it's not ideal uh, for for everyone, and it's difficult. So my advice is you know to keep busy and positive, like he said before. And uh, you know, the most important side of this challenge in this period because you mentioned just now is you know to 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 understand uh, you to understand at which point of view of of your life you are at so if you understand the point that you are at you also can make some decisions and also you're gonna have results 
So let's say I give you, for example, develop the things that you believe, uh, that, you, that you believe in it most. And for example, you need to delete the unnecessary. So, you know, I, I, if I want to be connect with my student during this period, what I need to do, I need to text them. I need to call them. I need to create a sort of relation. This is the reason why, uh, for example, once a week, I create a call with my juniors, with all my juniors on a Zoom call. And I try to, you know, yeah, the most important part of our job is that we need to tell them that they are not alone. We are a team. So creating this kind of situation, allow them to understand that it's a we. It's not like, okay, you are alone. And they really love that. They're really enjoying that. So I, I, I love that. Yeah, I love that about the connection and, uh, you know, assuring them that they are not alone. Uh, although we are apart, we can't see each other, but we can still connect with one another, yeah? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so uh, I wanted to give you a few, you know, um, advice, suggestion of, of what the coach needs to, needs to do or, you know, how the coach needs to be in order to be, to succeed. So first of all, every coach, every person needs to develop a persona. So what I mean for persona, it's always an inside job. So what I mean for inside job is the person needs to, the, the, the coach in this case, needs to, you know, uh, try to make, try to analyze himself or herself and try to understand what, which kind of coach, which kind of person I want to be. And I want to start always, I, I start saying, try to, I want to be, um, be yourself first. So what I mean for be yourself is, you know, what it makes you happy, what it really makes you happy and unique compared to the others. This is a very important concept. We, the tendency of the people is to copy. I want to be unique. I want to help, you know, I want to be unique because I want to do the job that I'm, that I, that I'm good at. Credibility, keep studying and be innovative. And this is something that, this is something that, you know, it's really part of my, of my, of my belief. I really think that credibility is really important if connected also to each other, to the other's part. Available, you need to be available. As a coach Violet says before, you need to be available on site, online. So try to call, try to text, try to you know uh, um, send some a few WhatsApp messages because if you are expecting that your students are going to call you, you're not going to receive any message. You're not going to receive any call. We need to always do the first step if we want to improve that. Commitment. So we make the first move, yeah, uh, David. So be proactive and make the first move. Yes, I agree with that. Yes, totally agree. Because, you know, when we're talking about young, youngers, like, you know, uh, young, young, young people, or even athletes, even 18, 19 years old, you know, my experience is they go overseas, they play competition, but they never tax me. So I need to look online, see when, what time they play, when they finish, and then I text them. I try to wait. I try to understand, okay, let me see. They're going to text me back. No, probably not. But anyway, I said, okay, let me text, let me text them first and understand what, what, what is going to happen. The day after, I try not to text, but I actually, you know, I didn't receive any message. So I, I text again another time. So we need to always do the first move if we think it's correct. Even if they are, you know, expressing an amazing um, performance or a very low performance, because they need us in every single moment. Admission: We need to be honest with us. We need to be honest to yourself, to ourselves, and also to themselves. So, is if there is something that we don't know, it's better to say, "Oh, um, I need to look into it. I don't know." And then empathy. So ability to help the others, understand your student. And, you know, if, we, if a coach is able to, you know, uh, have a good, a good connection between this through an inside job, I think, you know, the coach is, uh, is going to do, is going to be able to develop a great persona. Wonderful, wonderful. I think uh, you kind of hit the nail on the head there by saying that when you do all these things, the inside job, as you call it, uh, it really defines you as a person, defines you as a coach, isn't it? And I think you differentiate yourself from other coaches by being proactive in engaging the students, as an example, engaging the players and athletes. 
Yes, I agree. So how do we motivate our athletes? Communication is everything. As we said, in try to try to communicate, try to build a relation is the most important thing. So here are a few points that you know I try to I try to you know, uh, I'm trying to uh, every day to use has a fixed point in my coaching. Athletes are important, not the coach. So coaches need to listen more and talk less. Athletes need to talk. They need attention. They need attention when the performance is really high or very low. Use keywords to get in the brain. As I said before, let's use the words with we. Let's do it. We can make it. Always with we and no you. Because otherwise they're going to feel that they are going to be just alone. They are going to be there in a corner. Congratulate them uh, in public and school them privately. Quality and quantity training is crucial. And this is, we're gonna see later. We need to create fixed goals, uh, short and medium and long terms. Help them to find the answers. So this is important. Try to, try to help them to figure out the answer without telling them directly. Tell them the truth and especially accept to be left behind. Sometimes happen. And we need to accept it. I think this is really, uh, uh, really good stuff because I think it aligns to the contemporary thinking about engaging our co uh, engaging our athletes, being athlete centric, isn't it? That the athletes is the center of uh, what we do. Absolutely. So let's have a look on the quality and quantity of training. So how do we motivate our athletes at the end of the story? So the training needs to be based on the level of the athlete, on the attitude, on the time, on the goal, on the goals, and on the performance. And this is a very interesting um, graph that is from Dr. Guadagnoli that is basically telling us the relation between, uh, okay, the, relation between uh, the difficulty of the exercise or the training and the outcome of the of the of the athlete so for the outcome is the learning so how much the athlete is learning on that exercise on that training on that drill so the green line is basically the amount of uh, performance okay when the green line met the blue line is where the maximum performance and the maximum learning we have so it's not true if we have in this scenario where the amount of the difficulties of the exercise is really high, we can see that the amount of learning of our athlete is really low. So find the perfect balance between the difficulties and the outcome that it doesn't need to be very easy or very hard. This is the perfect point for us to give them a great training, a great motivation and a great learning at the same time. Mm. Different yeah, would be yeah. for a beginner. You can see that the green, the green curve here is much smaller compared to an athlete. So in this scenario, the difficulty of the, of the training obviously has to be much smaller. And the, the learning curve, the learning side is, is getting much higher compared to, uh, compared to him in terms of uh, training difficulties. So obviously we need to, we need to as I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, the perfect balance between the quality and the quantity of training compared to the performance of the athletes is essential in our, in our coaching daily. Yeah, that's uh, really interesting. And I guess that's, that's the challenge for, for coaches. How do we strike that balance, you know? Uh, because it can be a delicate balance, isn't it? Uh, Balasa, if I can just get you to jump in and share your experience and thought about achieving sure. that balance. Uh, yes, I, I also believe that's, that's crucial. That's very, very important. Uh, what is, um, so balance, like the difficulty of the, of the exercise and the satisfaction what the athletes can get from it is, is, is also very important. So if you make the exercise too difficult, they will not be satisfied. They will not be uh, happy or, or encouraged to, to try it again. So step-by-step -step approach is very important. So start with easier and then after that, make it harder and harder. 
so they have the satisfaction and they have the learning and uh, at the end they, they achieve what was planned to be achieved but not immediately in one step it's really slowly gradually increase the level of uh, of, of, of difficulties and and then they, they can enjoy they will have the satisfaction at every step and at the end they will achieve what was planned to be achieved. Yeah, thanks for that, Balas. Uh, uh, David, uh, back to you in terms of how we can perhaps leverage on technology to to help us, you know, find that balance uh, so that we can achieve that performance or help our athletes achieve that performance that we want. Sure. So, do technologies have an an impact on our job? Well, in my work, in my job, yes, but I. I extremely believe that in uh, all our sport business, we have an important impact. So technologies have important effect on business, no matter the size of your enterprise. First and foremost, the technologies affect a business ability to communicate with customers without guessing. In today's busy business environment, it is necessary for the coaches to interact with clients quickly and clearly, building a solid trust. Technologies is the way to go. I do. I try to explain this during uh, the workshop that I'm creating uh, when I explain them how the, important the technology is. And after after a quick discussion with all the coaches, they are understanding two uh, like you know two important things. The first one is technologies are investment are not expenses. And the second one is what which kind of return of investment you're going to have based on the technology that you're going to buy. And if the return of his investment is high, probably, most probably you need to buy that technology. If it's low, most probably you need to understand if really that kind of technology is going to help you to be unique, to be different compared to the others. So um, usually what... Um, what we're trying to, uh, what usually uh, coaches needs to, needs to consider is five to 10% to of our total income per year needs to be in, uh, uh, needs, to be, needs to be put in learning or technology. So if, I'm, uh, if, I, if my total income is $100,000 per year, I need to put between five to $10,000 per year in learning, so in studies or technology. And this is, uh, this is, uh, you know, trying to find what really makes you different than the others. And you're going to be, I think, happier and, you know, be more, and you're going to be also more motivated to be, be to be better every day. Can uh, I chip in uh, here for a second? Say, say it again? May I, may I say something uh, to this? Absolutely. Yeah, so, sure, Balas. Yeah. I 100% agree with this, but you mentioned that... Uh, some percentage has to go for this. I believe that even uh, you have to invest, uh, even uh, if you don't have uh, that kind of earning. So why is it important to invest? Is because that's how you will you will get uh, where you want to be. So even for 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 athletes also, I would say it's just equally important to invest in themselves. So do not wait for everything to, to, you know, to come to you because of whatever you achieve, if you think you deserve something, always try to invest in yourself. So coaches also, but athletes as well, even if they don't have a, a solid income, they should invest in their future. And uh, techno technology is, is one thing, but learning is also extremely important for coaches and athletes as well. So not only coaches, for athletes, I think it's equally important. So if they don't see it that way, if they see that, oh, because I achieved something, I deserve uh, to get this and that, I think that's wrong. That's a wrong approach. So every athlete has to uh, invest in themselves. And uh, I think that's that's crucial. Yeah, that's a good point, uh, Balas. Uh, David? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I completely agree on, on that. Uh, you know, uh, for, for coaches, for coaches, we have, in order to succeed, if you want to succeed, so we're talking about coaches that want to succeed because 
um, there are also some coaches that are happy to be there and, I, and I'm perfectly fine with that. But if you're looking to succeed, two most important things you need to do. One is to invest in technology and study. And the second one is invest in marketing. If you are able to combine these two things together, you're going to succeed. Because you don't need to be the smartest person in the world to be considered a very strong coach. And you don't even need to spend as much money as you know as you have in the, your bank account in order to, in, in marketing in order to uh, show to the people how good you are. So if you have a great combination between these two things, I I I I do believe that coaches can 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 succeed easily. And uh, this is during this is a picture during my uh, an Asian tour uh, event with uh, this is a guy from Malaysia. And um, you know was uh, was pretty was pretty amazing. I have uh, I have a very good relation with him. And even though um, if we go back again, if we even though he's living in uh, KK, is uh, I'm 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 texting him. I'm calling him very often, like probably one or twice a week at least. And I what is really what is really cool is he bought the technology that I'm using. Okay, one of those and. So we, we, we are having the same, you know, um, the same data, the same feedback every time. So we know what we are looking for. And, you know, I want the most important thing, guys, is that we need to take care of our guys, of our athletes. And we need to make them happy. And at the same time, we need to tell them that, yes, I want you there. I'm here for you because I really want you. I, would, I, would, I really want to take care of you. So if you want to have a look on a few things that I'm posting on my, on my Instagram, this is my Instagram. If you want to send me an email, this is my email on my website. So thank you, Azar, for letting me sharing the, the, the slides. I yeah. thanks, now. Uh, thanks, David, for, for that. Um, I think it's timely, therefore, that uh, we, we take on uh, some of the questions uh, that our participants uh, have uh, put up. And I think the first question relates to um, what we talked about earlier um, about that connection and therefore that relationship as well. And there's a question here that came out uh, from, for Balas uh, in that during this situation, uh, let me pull that question out. Um, yeah, uh, from Lyndon Pang to, to Balas. Uh, for those coaches, uh, for those of us who are coaching in schools, especially primary schools, we are not allowed to have any way of communicating with the players except in person. So what are some of the things that we can get the team to be mentally up to speed when we move back to uh, the training ground? What are your thoughts on that, Balas? First of all, it's really only my thought. I think it's not good that you are not allowed to communicate to them. But anyway, if if you cannot personally communicate to them, then you have to uh, share it. Like you have to have a, 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 at least a Facebook account where you can share things uh, with them. So it's not like you are calling them, but you are you are you are sharing things with them. What what keeps them motivated? Sharing mm -hmm. things related to your sport, related to you, like even I would say you know your life. Uh, whatever you are doing during this situation would be something what could bring you closer to them. So they have access to your Facebook account to see you, what you are doing and uh, what, uh, it's, what is happening in the sport, what happened in the past in the sport, uh, uh, post videos about that, then ask questions in that. Uh, just an example, what we are doing now, uh, which is, for our, our paddling community, we, we, we started a quiz where every day we have a, a question, what we ask, and uh, the athletes uh, and those who are from the sport, they, they, I think they love it and they, 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 we have a lot of uh, views on this and uh, we keep them engaged. So we don't uh, let them uh, be uh, alone, as David mentioned. Uh, you just have to find a way to, to, to communicate with them, even if you, you are not allowed to yeah. personally. Uh, yeah. So I guess in, in school, you can always uh, leverage on the teachers in charge, right, to connect with uh, the, the athletes and the students if you're not able to uh, connect or directly with them, yeah? Yeah, that, that would be a, a solution. 
Yeah. Uh, David, there's a, there's a question coming in from Esther. I think uh, this relates to what you talk about in terms of investment, that ROI. Um, so what kind of technology or examples of technology that coaches and athletes can invest in? Well, it really depends on which field you are. Um, I, I know a few technology um, outside of my, of my uh, job that is outside of golf. Um, but I, I need to know, I would like to know more about which kind of, uh, in which kind of sports uh, um, uh, um, Esther is at. So based on that, I can tell her basically, you know, try to look into it, try to look into it. So yeah, Esther, if you want to send me an email or uh, send me a message on, uh, on Instagram, I will be more than happy to link you up with uh, the technology um, out there in the market. So it's not going to be a problem. Mm. And I, I guess the next question is uh, for both of you. We'll probably take this as a last question. Uh, we do have uh, players, student athletes who are, you know, at, at a, just a participation level. Um, and how do we get them to um, be competitive? Yeah, moving uh, those, those who wish to just go on the participation level and those who are going to go on a competitive level, how do we motivate them and how do we convert them from that recreational to uh, competitive? Okay, I think everything is a competition. So even at the recreational level, uh, you have to make them be competitive. So you can have like small games uh, where they can challenge, where they can be challenged. And uh, if that happens, then, then uh, those who will be interested in the sport, sooner or later, we'll, we'll take it more and more seriously. If you have uh, the chance to succeed, and if you succeed in any kind of challenges, uh, highly likely you will be more interested uh, uh, in the sport, and sooner or later you will you you will have a chance, and I think you will you will you will start to take it more seriously, and then you you will not even realize that oh, I'm doing it seriously and I'm, I'm taking it uh, to the next level already. So I think the so best I guess is injecting, injecting that, uh, that element of competition, regardless of what level they are at, and uh, if they then are intrinsically motivated to want to step up to the more competitive or higher level, then uh, it will come naturally. Would that be correct? I, I believe so. Yeah. Uh, David, your thoughts? Uh, I, 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 I totally agree with ballots. So I have, I have the same idea with that. So, you know, it's, uh, it's more a combination of, uh, of many things, uh, uh, communication between coaches, parents, uh, uh, athletes, and, uh, you know, yeah, I, I will not say much is, uh, it's, it's not easy to find a, a, an answer on that. It really, it really depends on, uh, on the, on the athletes that you have in front. It can be uh, it can be an athlete that just need to have uh, you know a better uh, motivation from the coach, or it can be also an athlete that needs to have just a sort of uh, freedom to uh, to understand and to figure out alone which is uh, what which kind of path he wants or she wants to follow. So you know, um, I think I think uh, uh, the you know the communication how you communicate with them. It's uh, it's really like it's 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 predominant. It's it's uh, it's necessary. Is uh, it's crucial on that. So yeah, I totally agree with Balas, and uh, um, it's 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 more of a sort of um, during the you when you put goals in your with the athletes, they also try. They also they are also able to understand how good they are. So if they are able to achieve goals easily or are very hard in a very hard time or in a very, with very hard training, they're going to give them the motivation to believe or not believe in their, in their future. So it's a combination of many things, training, coaching, communication, parents. Um, yeah. So we need to work. Yeah. It's when you need to work on, on those aspects in order for you to, 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 to motivate, to motivate them. Yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks for that, uh, David. Um, unfortunately, we run out of time. Time flies uh, when we're having fun and we're doing uh, this really wonderful sharing. So I, I like to just ask you both to, uh, for 
some words of wisdom, words of encouragement and motivation for coaches out there and even our athletes and players as well. Uh, some final words uh, from you, Balas, first, and then David. Okay, I, I think I would just repeat myself what I, what I said before, that these are, don't use the word difficult times, it's different times, and adopt to the, to the current situation. The faster, the better you adopt, the easier uh, life you will have and the better uh, results you will be able to get out of your athletes. So that's, that's, that's what, I can, what I can say. Thanks for that. Uh, I, I like that. Uh, not look at difficult times, but different times and uh, the ability to adapt, I think, is what's key. Thanks for that, uh, Balas. David, what's your wisdom from you? Uh, my wisdom is just understand at which point of your life you are at and make your decision. Take what is really necessary, the Lydia necessary. And from that, you're going to find results. You're going to be happy and you're going to have a very strong motivation. Wonderful, wonderful. Thanks for that, uh, David. Well, uh, we, we've come to the end of uh, the third edition of Motivational Mondays. Uh, and I want to um, say a huge thank you to Balas and David once again for uh, being here and sharing really your wonderful thoughts, reflections and uh, advice for the coaches that have uh, been with us here on Zoom as well as those who are watching us uh, live on Facebook. So uh, for coaches who are with us, just a couple of things for me before we end. 